Hello and welcome to The Bridge, a video town hall Q&A series where Starfleet Inatex leadership team shares updates, provides deeper insights, and answers questions from our community. Uh, my name is Tiago Arnaiz, I'm the General Manager for Communications here at SFIO, and today I am joined by our CEO, Jets Laxon. Jets, thanks for joining me today. No problem, Tiago. Good day, everyone. How are you, Tiago? Doing good, doing good. Uh, Jets, good. we've pulled together a number of questions from our community of partners and investors, so I'm hoping we can jump right into it. Of course, let's do that. Awesome. So this first question comes from Value Stockmaster from, from Twitter. Uh, they say, thank you for organizing this. Uh, can you please elaborate on SFIO's growth strategy for Epiphany Cafe uh, and its expansion outside of New Zealand? Sure. So Chago, um, the initial stages of um, Epiphany Cafe's global expansion, we'll see the brand entering five key markets, namely um, Australia, the Philippines, Malaysia, the United Arab Emirates, and of course, the United States. And as we all know, the ongoing pandemic has reshaped local markets all over the world. So we have been very intentional about investing heavily in market research and visibility studies. And um, our goal early this year is to build a launching pad for hyper growth expansion, but also sustainable and long term growth. And uh, of course, we are taking a measure twice, cut once approach to ensure that. Awesome, that's great. Uh, a bit of a follow up question, actually. Uh, so this one comes from High Yield Investing on Twitter. Um, are you able to create a timeline for the key milestones that you're targeting for 2022? Um, for many of the subsidiaries, it, it's challenging for investors to follow all the target dates. Uh, and they're, they're asking perhaps a visual representation would help that. Uh, maybe you could provide an overview of the 2022 milestones. Definitely. So um, basically, in order to accomplish our goal of uplisting to the NASDAQ, we've assembled quite an ecosystem of flagship businesses and support services, all guided by shared values and cohesive strategy. One of, the, one of our goals is, of course, to find better and better ways to communicate that with the community. And um, we are developing infographics and explainer videos to keep everyone abreast on our progress. And that said, um, in very broad stroke, 2022 is going to be a very busy year for us, I believe. And um, in Q1, our primary goals are consolidation, fundraising, and project launching. We've consolidated all our subsidiaries into three key industries led by our three flagship brands. Of course, we have here the Epiphany leading the um, food and beverage, and we will be launching a new brand for the real estate and LNS or the Lintech Network Solutions leading the technology. We will also be raising capital through Reg A up to about 20 million for the first round. This will be used for the funding, uh, of course, of the Epiphany Cafe expansions, launch the export distribution food and beverage businesses, and increase our portfolio in real estate. And leading to Q2, we will be kicking off a number of projects that will kick off our hyper growth plan. For our food and beverage expansion, this includes the market research and visibility studies, site selections, logistics, and the acquisition of an existing commissary in the US. We will be completing the first round of our acquisition program and breaking ground on some of the real estate development projects as well. And between Q2 and Q3, we will be filing our audited financials and application to uplist to the OTCQB. So that's gonna be a milestone for us. And finally, beginning next quarter and leading to the end of the year, we will be pre-selling both acquired properties and properties in development under our real estate division. So like I said, Tiago, this is going to be a very busy year for us. If 2021 saw us paving the way for growth, 2022 is where the rubber truly hits the road. Absolutely. Uh, well, well put, well put. Uh, really a great outline for what's going to be, like you said, a very busy year for, for SFIO. Uh, now, let's hear from Value Stockmaster again. Uh, they ask, SFIO's third quarter revenue was great. Uh, Year-to-date revenue, they, they list here $18.6 million, uh, $18 million as of September 30th. Uh, which they say is amazing, net profit margin of 
and a company estimated at $100 million in revenue for 2022. Uh, all of those figures said, um, their question is, is, net prof, is the net profit margin for 2022 going to be the same as last year's? Well, it's very exciting, Tiago, as I've said now. Um, the majority of the 100 million revenue that we're targeting for 2022 is expected to come from the real estate division. These are high yield projects meant to fuel our expansion initiatives through reinvestment rather than diluting the shareholder equity. Like I said, it's an ecosystem approach to hyper growth. So to answer the question for 2022, we're actually targeting a higher net profit margin of 30%. Awesome. Uh, this next two questions actually come from Victor Singh. Uh, the Reg 1 offering for, uh, for $20 million at 40 cents uh, is great for shareholders, they say. Uh, can you please elaborate more on how SFIO is going to achieve that? Of course. So given our solid financials and robust ecosystem, building roadmap to the NASDAQ, we've been successfully approaching strategic investors and partners who believe in our vision. That's very important, right? And um, these guys are willing to invest higher than the market price at the moment. Say at 40, 40 cents, the offering at, um, on our reg A. These additional capital, Chago, are expected to generate more momentum for the conglomerate and open up new opportunities for SFIO. There you go. Uh, and a follow-up question, this may come up again later. Uh, SF is SFIO on track to post the 2021 annual financials uh, in the next, uh, in the near future? Absolutely. We will be posting the financials as early as possible, well before the due date. Great. Uh, this next question comes from uh, Guy Longst. Uh, what is the estimated time frame for the first Epiphany Cafe to be opened uh, and where? Well, so this is a very common question, Tiago, and for good reason, right? So we're extremely excited to be expanding Epiphany Cafe across the five key markets that I mentioned a while ago. And like I said earlier, this follows a very methodical, measure twice, cut once approach. So in Q2, we will be acquiring an existing commissary that can support our smart risk technology that will ensure quality as we commence the licensing model for Epiphany Cafe products through convenience stores, state, um, service stations, and the like. And as we gain exposure that way, we will be promoting the brand and paving the way for the first flagship store in America. And based on our preliminary studies and subject to, of course, border restrictions, COVID, we are targeting to launch the first Epiphany Cafe license outlet or franchise store in Chicago from Q2 onwards. You too in Chicago. Uh, and now speaking of the US expansion, uh, Anthony Martin asks, will there be any marketing outreach in the United States this year? Uh, any type of presence or, or road shows? Good question. We are already revving up for a two month long road show across the US states. Kicking off in April, depending of course um, on border restrictions, we'll be engaging with strategic partners for Epiphany Cafe, as well as family offices, institutional investors and the like. These efforts will be led by our very own Jonathan Pepalver, who will be working closely with our advisor, Vince Caruso, and as well as our IR and communications teams. And of course, you're part of it, right? So these all-star teams, I consider it the all-star team, right? will be reaching out to influencers and investor communities across the US. So to kick off this roadshow, we will be blasting SFIO story the vision through the number of key ad placements, including a video billboard on the NASDAQ building in Pine Square. Awesome, and I'm I personally very excited to be working with Jonathan and, and Vince. You're right, really an all-star team that you've gathered here. Uh, next question, uh, this is more about our technology. Uh, this is from Gary Simmons. They ask, do you have plans to license out the smart freeze technology to other companies? Uh, maybe like bread uh, manufacturers, et cetera. It's, they say this seems like low hanging fruit. Exactly. So we're definitely open to collaborating, by the way, with external companies that are interested in our smart freeze technology. We would like to share this uh, technology to the world, essentially. And that may be a lucrative opportunity down the line. And um, however, right now, our focus is to acquire commissaries that can utilize our smart freeze technology to fuel Epiphany's growth in the next few months. Awesome. 
Uh, this next question is, is again about, about our financials. Uh, so James Neville and Ma Michael Martinez actually both asked this question. When should shareholders expect audited financials to be released? Okay, um, we'll be initiating the audit in the beginning of Q2 after we complete the first round of acquisitions, which is currently ongoing. And these are all exciting acquisitions, by the way. I'm sure we'll hear more about that in, in future editions of, of the bridge. Uh, now, this next question comes from Johnny Five Labs. Will SFIO consider a stock buyback in the near future as part of its strategy top list? This is important. It's part of our commitment to our shareholders, Tiago. Yes, is the answer. We've allocated some of our budget towards the stock buyback strategy in preparation for our uplisting. So those funds will come from our capital raising efforts and profits. Uh, another question from Gary Simmons. How do you address the work shortage in the U.S.? New York, uh, according to Gary, is the worst when it comes to work shortage. Well, this is a real issue, right, that I believe no single company can address. However, as a conglomerate with a pretty sizable footprint, our goal has always been to bridge markets and create global opportunities. So I do see SFIO as a contributing to the work shortage solution bringing in jobs, new opportunities um, through our global operations, including United States in New York. Awesome. And a final question for you, Jets. Uh, this one from Michael Martinez uh, again. Has a share reduction plan been developed or finalized already? OK, our lawyers are currently working on the structure of the new class of uh, preferred shares with a uh, 12 month restriction, at least. And um, a majority of our partners, this is good news for everyone, um, a majority of them already signed off on the plan and we're aiming to execute it before the end of Q1. Amazing, a lot to look forward to. Uh, I think that about wraps up this version, this edition rather of The Bridge. So Jets, thanks for joining me. I'm gonna hope to catch you in the next one. We'll do that. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you, Chaga. Thank you.